Hello and welcome to the first series of my Yukata series for that I'm going to do this uh, this summer. This one is the first one and we're going to talk about what a Yukata is. Now, many people think that Yukata is a kimono and a kimono is a Yukata. Well, uh, no. <laughs> yukata is actually um, a type of kimono. It's not necessarily that Yukata defies a kimono, not that a kimono defies a yukata. Yukata is just the most casual kind of kimono that you can find. You can compare it to like a pair of shorts and a tank top in personal clothing, that kind of casualty. Now I've got one here, this one's folded up by the way. <laughs> Uh, that is one of the other ones that I own. And this one is made from cotton, just plain cotton. And that actually derives from back in the day, as far as the Heian period, which is from the 8th century to the 12th, I think. About 12, 11. And they wore it after a bath to just loosely cover themselves and so that they Yukata could absorb the remaining moisture and especially in the Edo area which is from 16 something to the mid um, 19th century the the more the common people began to wore more flashy kind of yukata and that's how it came to existence it still is and it was from a bathrobe but a robe worn after a bath. It's not specifically a, a kind of robe in itself, but still. So, flash forward to the modern times. Now, yukata is basically worn as a casual kimono to you know, any kind of festival, but I will explain that in a more detailed video. But yeah. One that you can recognize from it is, like I said, this one I actually made myself, but and I sewed it myself, the, the fabric I just bought. It's really flashy. Um, yeah, you can, it always is actually made from cotton. I don't think I ever saw either a silk or a polyester kind of uh, yukata. I've only, only seen, um, yeah, I think I've only saw cotton once. And they come in various um, patterns, colors, uh, and all. But yeah. And always, it's always worn with the most casual kind of variety of obi, which is the hanhawa obi or the half width. You can buy those in normal obi, like the ones you have to tie, and the ones that you actually just stick on. Uh, it's called a tsuke obi, tsukiri obi. It means a uh, two-piece obi. I'll have that in a separate video about which is better to wear in regarding to experience. But yeah, that's almost, uh, yeah, there's not much to know about Yukata, yeah, when it rush from, well, a, a rope worn after a bath or to a communal bath, and then some grown into a, a garment that you can wear outside because traditionally they weren't. They weren't worn outside of the, the past. That's kind of a thing that you need to remember. Some people still think that you shouldn't wear your kata outside of uh, bath, but those, especially those in onsen, which are hot springs, and you have in the various areas, you have like a hot onsen town, which means like a hot spring town, basically a village. You will get like from your hotel or something. You will get a yukata, but those do look different from the ones that I have here and the one I'm wearing. Those tend to be unisex, which these ones, well, they are definitely not unisex. This one is definitely for a woman. And all the difference is that those look different. They are usually just ankle length. Whereas this one is longer than floor, well, it's floor length. I have to pull up the hem, make an O shorty or the fold, 
and then, then I can put OBM. Plus the OB itself is about that thick and it's more a tie than an OB itself. It's not, yeah, you can't really compare it to an actual OB. Yeah, if you put those side to side, I will have a picture down below of how our own senior cutter, so to say, looks um, in comparison with a regular summer yukata that you can wear throughout the summer. So yeah, that's I think for the first one. Next will be yeah, a different one and you will see that one on Wednesday. So until then, bye bye.